Hi everyone, Brian here from Embrilliance. Today we're going to start looking at the new controls in Stitch Artist Level 3. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the buttons that have been added to the tool pane. The first set of buttons in the Stitch Artist tool pane control how you interact with the program. There are four new additions to this section. The first one helps you switch between default drawing with line or curve. If you're familiar with Stitch Artist 1 and 2, you'll know that when you enter points, you're going to have a curved line follow you as the default. Well, sometimes you want to draw straight lines. Of course, you can do that with the control key. But suppose your entire design consists of straight lines and you don't feel like holding the control key down for the entirety of your drawing. So let's start over and use our new button, draw with line, and you'll see it changes when it's depressed. Now we're going to draw with points and we're now drawing straight lines. We can of course use the control key now to make curves. So it basically reverses the operation of the control key and makes drawing that much easier. Another nice feature of drawing with points selected as hard lines is the use of the shift key. So if we select draw with points and hold the shift key down, I'll get intervals of 15 degrees so I can have nice clean straight lines at set angles. It's very handy when you're making geometries to have those points line up perfectly. Next, let's talk about the auto scrolling feature of the drawing interface in Stitch Artist. As you draw, you're in a mode that allows you to go up to the edge of the screen and it will scroll for you. And you can go, of course, up, down, or side to side. This is very handy when the art that you're copying or tracing over is not visible and you just need to get to that next point or two to go around the shape and it leaves your zoom value consistent so you don't have to be zooming in or out. Um, it's a very nice feature but occasionally somebody will want to turn that off and here we can turn the auto scroll off so that if I'm right up against the edge it's not going to interfere with me as I'm trying to draw. The next two buttons control the generation of stitches. We have the ability now to delay stitch generation and generate stitches on demand. This can be useful if you've got a large complex object and you want to change the shape in several different ways. You might not want to wait while the program changes the stitches. So we're going to take this letter E, delay the stitch generation, and now I'm going to adjust the angles of the nodes and give it more of a serif look to it. So we can back out and see our shape and now let's generate. Another new feature to the program is a button that goes into the draw section and this will let us add a carving line to a satin or fill object. So if I click that button and then come to a satin shape that I've already drawn, I can add texture in the form of needle lands to the stitches. Another popular feature in Stitch Artist Level 2 and 3 is the ability to bring in vectors like the SVG format. The SVG format is a world standard for vector graphics and what vectors mean is you've got clean outlines that are using the same technology that you, we draw with in Stitch Artist itself. And these vectors come in with nodes that you can edit, but we do have some problems when we import vector art. It's not really perfect for digitizing. We need a set of tools to go and modify the vectors, uh, remove things where they intersect, be able to inflate them and deflate them and so on. And you'll notice there's a new path section in Stitch Artist that's been added to level three. And this set of buttons deals primarily with vector art and working with vector shapes. Uh, because it's a complex topic, we're going to pick up with that in part two of this series and we'll go into each of those buttons in depth there.